tutorial on how to get a user interface started with libgdx. Before we begin, I am presuming that you have already copied the following files into the assets folder of your Android project. Defaults.font, defaults.png, password.font, password.png, uiskin.atlas, uiskin.json, and uiskin.png. Again, before we begin, I'd just like to highlight a couple of useful things. First off is the Java docs. If you go to the libgdx website, click on documentation, you can click on this link to go to the Java docs. The first thing we're going to be looking at is in the scene2d class. Um, well, sorry, the scene2d package. One of the classes there is stage. Stage is a 2D scene graph containing hierarchies of actors. Stage handles the viewport and distributes input events. All you really need to know now is that um, all our UI elements are actors, which means that you can sort of see, you can then draw them, and also that they can either act or be acted upon. The hierarchy thing means that you can nest them inside each other. So we're going to be creating a table and then putting our UI elements into the table, and then stage will take care of all the drawing and all the acting, well, handling events for us. Another useful source of um, help is if you look at the wiki, it's a work in progress, but there is quite a bit of documentation with some very nice explanations on how to do various things in libgdx. Before we start with the user interface, I'm going to show you guys how to solve a problem that some of you are coming across when your flash drive letter changes. So if it's changed and you can't open the projects, um, mine's obviously not having that issue, but what you would do is you just click delete. Do not choose delete project contents on disk, otherwise you're going to lose all your hard work. Click OK. That will delete them and now you're able to re-import. You do need to delete them before you can re-import them. Existing projects into workspace. Select the root directory. And finish. You'll notice that before I deleted and re-imported them, I did create a backup of the disco folder just in case I did lose everything. Right, onto the project. Um, just a brief reminder, if you want to run it, you run it from the desktop. Currently we're seeing a black screen. The reason for that is if you take a look at the um, beginning code is that I've deleted everything useful out of the game, the disco. Because we're starting from scratch, I'm also going to delete the login screen and so you'll be able to see exactly what I do. To, um, I do want our login screen to show up, so we want to go with this. This just means the current object we're working in. So this dot set screen, and it's going to be a new login screen, and we're going to send it the game class as a parameter. We'll obviously complain that there's no login screen. So let's fix that by clicking on the package. So you're right clicking on the package, choosing new class, and we'll call it login screen. This needs to implement and spelled implements screen. Complain that you need to, don't need to import screen to do so and at that point it will complain that there are a whole bunch of unimplemented methods. So let's add them. Before we look at the methods I want to get our constructor going. That's public login screen and we're going to, it was it's being sent a game which I'll call G. Before I go any further, I do want to be able to store that game, so let's create a private game field, which we'll call game, and as our very first line in the constructor, we'll say that game equals G. As mentioned, you need a stage. If you're going to create a, a user interface, and so our stage is equal to a new stage. Then, if we want input to go to our stage, we need to set the input processor to point there. So we'll say gdx.input.setInputProcessor, and we're going to send it the stage. So now all of our input will be sent to the stage, and so we'll be able to click on buttons and so on. Um, a couple of things I need to import. So let's import game. Let's import stage. And at this point, you should see that everything works. Uh, if I try and run my project, it will run, and obviously I'll still have a black screen, 
because I haven't added or changed anything. Before we can add user interface elements, we need a skin. Let's create a skin, and I'm going to call it skin, and that's going to be equal to a new skin, and I need to pass it, well, I could create, an, I could leave it like that, and I could create the new skin programmatically, but uiskin.json handles all of that for us. So that's gdx dot in, sorry, files dot internal and pass it the path, well, uiskin dot dot json. I'll also need to import skin. Okay, so now we can start actually creating uh, UI elements. I'm going to start off with the text button and I'll call it btn login and that's equal to a new text button and um, let's just pretend we don't know what the constructor is. This is where the Java docs come in very handy because I can go to my Java docs. I know that I'm working in scene2d.ui or I could just choose all classes and search for it but scene2d.ui is going to restrict it to the user interface elements and I could click on text button. And the constructor here, I've got options for a string and a skin, string, skin and a style name, which we'll be using later, and then string and a text button style. Our text button style is already defined in the skin, so I'm going to use the first constructor. So I send it a string, which is just going to say, click me. and then I'll send it the skin. Now, I need to import the text button. Okay, so um, let's give our text button a position. So btn login dot set position. Let's say it's going to be at 300 and it's going to be 300 up. And let's give it a size. That size will be, let's say, 300 by 60. And now, very important, if we want this to actually draw and all the rest of it, we need to add it to the stage. The stage dot add actor. And I want to add btn login. Right, we're now ready to go to our render method. Okay, in the render method, um, you suppose need to do all that GL stuff, which I can never remember. So let's go to game screen. Copy that from our render method and paste it in there. So we'll now have a screen that clears and well, still displays nothing. So I'm not going to bother running it yet. Very easy to render everything in stage. First thing that we want to do is give everything an opportunity to act. So stage.act. Right? Uh, I want to send it delta, which is the amount of time since the last render uh, call. And then I want to send, and I want to say stage.draw. If I run this now, I should have a text button that draws. Okay, and you can see uh, the button responds to clicks by turning red, but doesn't do anything yet. Obviously, that's not very useful. So what we need to do is we need to add an action listener. So we'll say btn login dot add listener. And the type of listener we're going to add is a new click listener. Now, very important here is we do not want to close the open bracket, the round bracket. We instead want to open a squiggly bracket so that we can create our um, check listener methods that we want to override. And over here, we do a close round bracket and a semicolon. I'm still complaining, and that's because it uh, doesn't know what a click listener is. So let's import click listener. All right, so currently uh, we've added a click listener, but it doesn't do anything. Now, if we look at the Java docs for click listener, which is not over here, so what I'm going to do, I have no idea where they are. I'm going to go to all classes, scroll down to click listener, and we can see a number of methods that we can override. The one we're going to override is called touch up, and this is called when a mouse button or finger touch goes up anywhere, but only if touch down previously returned true for the mouse button or touch. So in other words, if I clicked down off of the button and then lifted on the button, it would not return a touch-up event. So this is an overrided event. We'll say override, and it's public, void, 
touch up. It takes an input event. We can call it E. It also takes a float X, a float Y, an int, which is the pointer, and an int for the button. And here we can put what we actually want to happen. Before I do that though, I'm just going to import input event. Make sure you uh, import the uh, bad logic one. Okay, so it should be the bad logic input event. And then now I can do whatever I want. So what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to change the text of the bu uh, button login. Before I can do that though, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make button login a field. As soon as you're going to change um, any of your UI elements in response to uh, an action or anything, you do want to declare them as fields. So we'll create text button over here. Sorry, private text button btn login. And at this point, I'm going to remove the declaration here so that we re that's referring to our field. And when I touch up, all I want to do is I want to say btn login dot set text. And I'm going to say, yay, that worked. Hopefully. So let's run the project. Now note, when I click down, it changes color in response to the, um, the, the fact that I've clicked it, but it's only going to implement the action listener when I release. And you can see it's turned to yay as soon as I released. Obviously, I'm not going to see any changes if I click it anymore. All right, so that's the basics of how to add an action listener. Another type of UI element that we would find quite useful is a text field. Okay, and again, the text field we're going to want as a field so that we're able to um, read in the data from it. In actual fact, we probably won't be changing our BTN login. So um, what I'm going to do over here is change it from a field back to a local variable. I apologize if that is confusing. Okay, and all I'm going to do here, in fact, is we're going to uh, call a method called process login. Okay, you, this could also be called, I think you'd be more familiar with btn login clicked. Perhaps I should go with that because that's what you're used to. Okay, and that's going to complain because there is no method called btn login clicked. So let's just quickly create one. Void btn login clicked. Um, okay, and let's just say for now when we click the login button, we're going to say game dot set screen. Um, and that was new game screen. Eventually, we're going to want to send a user or something to game screen. Not sure what it's still complaining about. Um, btn Oh, BT login clicked, needs to be BTN login clicked. All right, and now if I click on login, instead of changing the text, it should take me to the game screen straight away. Anyway, back to the text field. Now the text field we are going to want as a field of the class. The private text field, I'm going to call it TXF username. Okay, and again, I'm going to need to import text field. Once again, it has to be the bad logic text field. So we'll say txf username equals new and it's a new text field. We don't want to print anything, so we'll send it an empty string and a link to the skin. Let's give it a position. Um, let's say it's also going to be at 300. So we're going to have a little bit lower down, so say 250. And btn login dot set size again 300, and we'll make it 40. And then not btn login, sorry. Txf username, and then txf username dot. No, we don't need to add listener, sorry. What we do need to do though is go stage.addActor txf username. 
Right, and if we run this, we should see our username being displayed. Well, username field. There it is. Okay, hopefully you can see the need for a table already. You can see this button isn't centered, this text field isn't centered, so I'd have to fiddle around with the positions and so on. Feel free to do that though if you think using a table is complicated. All right, um, and finally, um, before I finish off this brief tutorial, let's take an example of how we could get information in from the BTN login. So instead of going game.setScreen, all I'm going to say is uh, BTN login dot not btn login sorry it's printed out so system dot out dot println txf username dot get text okay and so it should print out whatever I printed okay so let's try did this work and if I click it hopefully I should see did this work appearing. It did. Great. Um, I did say we were finishing, but I've just remembered that we need to do a password field as well. Okay. Um, and again, it's going to be a text field. You'll see where the password bit comes in later. And let's call it TXF password. Alright, now what I've done here is inside our skin declaration, let me just open that up, inside usskin.json, for text fields, which are over here, I added my own password style. And all I've done with the password style is I'm instead of using the default font, I'm using the password font. Okay, password font over here just defines a whole bunch um, on our PNG password. Let me open that up. So anyway, if I look at the password PNG, password PNG. is basically just a whole bunch of uh, letters and stuff show, uh, drawn as um, as art. Okay, and then the dot .font file just um, says where I want to start and where I want to end. If you look at the default font, if you have a look at the characters, they all start and end at different places and so on. All I've done with password font is I've changed the, um, I've taken them to all represent a hash. I got bored halfway through, so you'll, um, you guys are going to have to finish doing that for yourselves. Okay, so um, that's the basics of how a password field is going to work. So let's take a look at that now. So over here we're going to say txf password equals new text field uh, empty string skin and then we're going to send it password. Okay, and that was the name of the style that I defined in uiskin.json. Right, and if I, sorry, before I can run it, let's give it a position and a, a size. 300 again, let's say it's going to be at 200. And And finally, we want to add actor txf password. It's going to move the button login add actor to where we finished declaring the button login, purely for readability, not because it makes an actual difference. And if I run this now, I should see a password field. Over here, this is my username. Over here, my password. You should see everything gets replaced with hashes, except for the letters that I haven't finished copying yet. And there we go. Hopefully you've now got some better idea of how to add UI elements into a, and in fact how to change the new screen um, in uh, libgdx.